In this lesson, we're going to be going over importing Nessus results into Metasploit. The reason for importing Nessus results into Metasploit is because Nessus has gone out and found a number of vulnerabilities. And it's really helpful to have those vulnerabilities inside of Metasploit. We can quickly look up what vulnerabilities were found without having to do a lot of scanning ourselves inside of Metasploit and doing a lot of digging. This saves some time. Having run some Nessus scans, we could actually import those. Now again, this is something that I could do via the web interface. I could just do an import here. And that would give me the ability to go look for a file and I could actually import it that way. I'm going to do it via the console, which is what we've been using so far. I'm going to go into the workspace that we've been in, just to keep everything consistent. Now I'm going to do a DB import, and I have given it the file name, so it's importing the Nessus version 1 data. And so it found one host there, and it's going to import that host, and it's going to import everything that it found from the services, to the vulnerabilities, to everything else that was stored inside the Nessus report that was exported from Nessus based on the scan of these two particular systems. Now, now that I've got that, I can do a host, and there shouldn't be anything new here because we've already done a little bit of scanning of these two particular systems. I've still got .17 and .55, and based on the SSH and the SMB scan, I've actually added a few more systems to the hosts that we've got. Again, I could take a look at services. Here are all of the services that we have found to be available. Now the thing that I can do that I wasn't able to do before is do vulns. And that's the list of vulnerabilities. Now you can see there's a large number of vulnerabilities that have been located via Nessus, and those are now in the database. I can get out of Metasploit, get out of the console, and those vulnerabilities will remain in the database, so I can come back in any time. I can pull up the vulnerabilities list, and I could go looking to see what there may be available that I could go after and do a little bit of playing with. I've got my list of everything that's here, and if I were to actually go to my vulnerabilities right here by just mousing over the analysis tab, now I can select vulnerabilities, and it's going to bring up all of those vulnerabilities in a nice little tabular form, which of course I don't get via the console here. Now, there's a big advantage to looking at them here in that I've got clickable links now to some of the references that we've got. I've got references for all of these vulnerabilities, and I could just take a look at this one here, and it would bring up some data about that particular vulnerability. Now what that did was just brought me to the list of those vulnerabilities, but what I want to do here is pop open NSS 51891. The vulnerability that was turned up was this right here, SSL Session Resume Supported. I can quickly pop open information about each of these vulnerabilities, which is really helpful, so I know kind of what it is that I'm dealing with. And I've got a couple of pages of them, so I can really skim through all of these vulnerabilities and see what we've got here. There are quite a number of the NSS ones, and a lot of these appear to be based on SSH. Now, we've got the MS08067, and if I open that up, that's something that I could take a look at here. There's actually an available exploit for that. From the web interface, I can actually just run that exploit and see whether we can actually make that stick. Again, importing Nessus information gives me some vulnerabilities 
which are starting points on how I may be able to go about exploiting a particular system. In coming lessons, we'll be looking at actually exploits and what we can do with them and then what we can do once we've actually done the exploit.